now let us look at the facts that we discussed, some of the facts that we discussed right in the beginning of this chapter. And one of that, one of those facts we had was that how the price of mango comes down in the season while the hotel room rents in the season go up. Okay. Now, can you think of the reason? Now, we have done demand, we have done supply and we have also studied market equilibrium. Can you think of? Supply of mango in the season is more. Supply of mango in the season is more. more. Okay. So, let me write it here. So, let us say this is the probability line okay. yes, and supply in the season goes up. Or this is supply and this is supply in the summer okay, or in the season. Let us denote it. It goes up. While in off season we have to store it in, store it in the refrigerator and store it uh, because of which there is a lesser amount of mangoes available in the winter. So, its price is higher than. <laughs> but uh, for Not price. price. Price we will get from the equilibrium. equilibrium. What you can talk about that in the summer season when. The demand. No, in demand. The demand is let us say that demand probably again you can bring demand and supply both into the explanation. But what I suggest that if you think it is not that we do not want to have mango in the winter season. Sometime we just miss mangoes in the winter season and in the other seasons. We, we would love to have mango. So, let us say it is not impacting our demand. It may because we have developed the habit of having mangoes during the summer season. But again it is an abstraction. So, we can say that demand is more or less the same over the year. Okay? But in the summer month supply is lot more as you said. So, what is happening to the supply? It is shifting outward. So, let us say what is happening to the as a result. Okay? This price let us denote it by P 1 and Q 1. Q 1 is the amount of quantity, it is the quantity of mango bought and sold in other season at price P 1. And this is Q 2 and P 2. P 2 is the price of mango in the summer and Q 2 is the amount of mango bought and sold in the summer. Of course, it is not very precise. You may say that Q 2 is much, much higher than Q 1. But again, it depends how we draw the graph. What we can get is that qualitatively more mangoes will be sold in the summer month at lower price. Quantitatively speaking, we need the exact depiction of demand and supply curve. Now, let us look at the hotels. What happens? Let us say, let us take Simla, example of Simla in summer month. Here, demand increases. So, what we have demand is like this and supply I can say again here if we as I was talking about more precise information supply we can say that supply first increases as price increases of the hotel the room rent increases in Simla, but after some point of time supply stops increasing. So, I can say it is it is like this okay? after certain price it becomes the supply becomes fixed. And in the summer month, what's hap what happens? Because of heat of Delhi, people would like to visit Simla. So, demand for these rooms would go up many fold. Okay? So, it is going to be like this. So, see what is happening here. Earlier, this was quantity. Q 1, this is Q 2, P 1, P 2. So, when we say in season, what we mean is that quantity bought and sold goes up. That is what in season means. But the, these two things are happening because of different reason. Mangoes are in season, it means supply is increasing. But rooms in Simla, if I say just for example sake, when we are talking about rooms in Simla, then we are talking about increased demand and increased demand increases the 
room rent in Simla, while increased supply decreases the price of one unit of mango all over the country. You understand? Okay. Another <coughs> example let us take. Let us take another example that we know that aluminum is obtained from bauxite okay, through a process of smelting. And smelting is very intensive in electricity, okay, very, very intensive in electricity. So, now let us see that what happens if the price of electricity goes up, the price of electricity goes up. Price of aluminum will rise. That is very simple to see. Now, we know the concept price of electricity goes up, but I do not I am not just interested in looking at the market for aluminum. I am also interested in looking for the market of steel. Okay? And let me say just for the purpose of this example that producing steel is not that intensive in electricity. So, for our purpose we can assume that the change in price of electricity does not impact the production, pro production of steel directly. Mm. How about indirect effect? Now, again I want to complicate this problem just so that we understand that not only, now let us look at it, two things I want to say that there are two possibilities. The first possibility is that steel is a substitute. Steel is a substitute of aluminum in consumption. What I mean to say that if when the price of aluminum pot goes up, people shift to steel pots. Okay? And second also, again I do not know whether it is true or not, but just for the uh, just so that we understand the concept. Let me also say that steel is a substitute of aluminum in production. So, let us start with this first. The price of electricity is going up and still is a substitute of aluminum in consumption. What would happen? Let us forget about the second part right now. Just look at the first part. What would happen to the market equilibrium price of steel and quantity demanded of and supplied of steel at the market equilibrium price after the price of electricity goes up? You understand? Earlier we were talking about, now it is very easy to see that price of electricity goes up. It means, remember one of the factors that affect the supply curve, the cost of inputs. So, input cost is going up. It means, marginal cost of producing one more unit of aluminum is going up. So, it also means that willingness to supply is coming down. So, if I can do the aluminum market, what will happen to the supply? Let us say it is for aluminum. What will happen? Shift inwards. It will shift inwards. So, as a result, price would increase. P star aluminum will go up and Q star aluminum will go down. come down. What would be its impact if still is a substitute of aluminum in consumption? Demand curve so should try towards. Now, let us look at the steel market. What will happen to the demand of steel? Demand curve would shift. There will be higher demand of steel at the same price. Okay? So, and as we already assumed right now that for the part of one we are keeping, we are ignoring the second. So, supply curve will not change, supply curve still will not change. Fine? So, what is the result? 
P star steel also goes up, but Q star steel also climbs up. Okay? Unlike here, here they move in the opposite direction, here they move in the same, same direction. That is for the part 1. Now, let us look at the when now let us concentrate on the second part, ignore the first part that is still is a substitute of aluminum in the production. Okay? What happens? What will be its impact? Let us say we are talking about steel market. This is price, this is quantity. If they are substitute in production, if steel and aluminum are substitute in the production and price of electricity has gone up. So, price of electricity has gone up, willingness to supply, willingness to supply aluminum will come, come down. down. But what will happen? Willingness, willingness to, to supply, supply steel, steel will rise go up. up because steel and aluminum are substitutes. substitutes. So, it will go up something like this. Okay? So, what is its impact? Uh, sir, can we also think in this way that uh, the technology huh. that we have today for producing aluminum hmm. is proving to be a little more expensive. So, means a deterioration in technology we have observed with rise in prices. So, the technology See, again we are using technology for the particular technique that we use to produce. You know, technology is a black box. We will learn that technology is a black box that takes for economics purpose that takes certain inputs and produces certain output. Just because price of electricity has gone up, it is not about the technology is not about price. <coughs> technology is about like this is technology that you need one unit of electricity and one unit of bauxite to produce one unit of aluminum. This is the technology. So, technology is not changing. Okay? It is just the price of producing aluminum is going up. You understand? Fine. So, effect is similar, but not it is not the same thing. Fine. So, now you see here equilibrium price of steel is coming down and equilibrium quantity of steel is going up. So, what we have done? We have considered this first and second part individually. Now, what if we consider these two together? What will be its impact? So, now I am saying that let us say the price of electricity has climbed up okay, and aluminum production is intensive in electricity and steel is substitute of aluminum in production as well as in consumption. What would be the impact of increase in electricity price on steel market? Think about it. It is a substitute, so it's huh? a supply curve would, would shift outwards. Supply the curve, curve would shift rightwards. So we would get a new equilibrium point. We will get the new equilibrium point. So let me draw it here. Sir, I don't think so. There, there will be any change in demand curve as such. No. Demand will change demand because will demand change. demand curve will not change. Demand will change. Yes. Sir. Demand curve, curve will change. change. When we say demand changes, it we mean is the demand curve is changing. Why demand curve will change? Now, aluminum is more expensive. So, people will be willing to buy more of steel because steel is a it's substitute of demand. aluminum. Sir, so demand is changing. Its curve will not shift, right? Curve will shift. Remember, just it is just to remind you, let us look at the steel demand for steel curve. This is demand for steel curve. Here we have price, here we have quantity. Okay. Just let me explain it. So, what is happening now? This curve, you move along this curve only if price of steel is changing. Okay? You shift this curve when any other factor that can affect the demand of steel is changing. And here, the price of aluminum is changing, which is the factor that affects the demand of steel. So, you will get a shift rather than a movement along the curve. Fine? Okay. 
So, now what is happening that supply of steel is increasing and what is happening to the demand? Demand is also increasing. Demand is also increasing. <coughs> so, we can say clearly the quantity quantity of steel is going up. Can we say anything about the price of steel in the market? We have to we can't say anything. We, we do not look at the graph because graph can uh, if, how about drawing the new supply curve rather than like this I draw it like this. So, what we get you have to because right now we are interested in qualitative result. So, it is a good idea to separate the effects into two part and what we obtain let me draw it here. Here it is because of the first what we observed? We observed that price as well as quantity increases. So, this is the first effect, this is the second and this is the total. So, this is increasing and this is increasing fine. How about for the second? Quantity is increasing, price but increasing. price is decreasing. decreasing. So, the overall effect here it is very clear for the quantity that it has increased. This we do not know to say the impact we have to understand the not only the direction, but also the quantity that we do not have. We right now we are doing just qualitative analysis. So, we do not have the quantity. So, we cannot say the only thing that we can say that total impact on the quantity would be that more of steel would be bought and sold in the market. It is clear? Okay. 